comic books are weird. Their fans are arguably weirder, but yeah, on the whole, having a man dress up as a cave-dwelling mammal, or a girl who is legit a squirrel, or a chap who eats matter, you know, matter eater lad, for f**k's sake guys. But the only thing that's weirder than the characters themselves are the timelines they exist in. So with this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 incredibly weird comic book timelines. Number 10, Superman Red Sun. Well, in 2003, readers were invited to visit a world where Earth time was a few hours off from our real time. This very small modification leaves the ship carrying Superman to Earth landing in Ukraine rather than Kansas. The story of Red Sun begins there and then gets really, really weird. Superman becomes a tool, more so than usual, for the Stalinist Soviet Union, Lex Luthor becomes something of an American hero, and Batman gets a cool Yushanka. Now the weirdness that I'm speaking about really ramps up towards the end, when it turns out that it was Krypton all along. Spoilers, by the way. Number 9. Amalgam Comics Even from the perspective of comic books, the origin of the Amalgam Universe is honey-roasted nuts. Two brother universes representing DC and Marvel get into a row and decide to have a fight using their respective universes' heroes as proxies. However, with the character Access, who could combine characters into new ones, it got really weird. Cap and Superman were fused to form the Super Soldier, and things got so mad that there was even a Lobo the Duck character. Mental. It only lasted 24 issues, but was an almost drug-fueled ride nonetheless. Number 8. 1602 1602 was an 8-issue limited series published in 2003. Written by the always bizarre-minded Neil Gaiman, the series takes a look at popular Marvel characters living in the Elizabethan era. It's a pretty decent book, not amazing or anything, but a Spider-Man costume with neck ruffles just makes the universe so worthwhile. It's ridiculous, but inherently charming. Number 7. Marvel Tales Published in 1983, Marvel Tales features on its cover Captain America, Hulk Bunny, and Peter Porkula, the spectacular Spider-Ham. It's this last character who received his own short-lived series featuring the likes of Deer Devil, Goose Rider, Doctor Doom, Magskeeto, and many, many others. Oh god, these puns, I can't take it, I love it! Spider-Ham may not have been able to carry his own comic, but he made a number of appearances elsewhere, most notably the Spider-Verse limited run where he plays a key role in the battle of all the Spider-Men. He is the only pig though, so points for being unique. Number 6. Ape Avengers. If somebody was to come up to me and be like, Jules mate, I've got this banging idea for a Marvel Zombie sequel, I'd be pretty very much totally 100 per f***ing cent on board with that idea. If they then said to me, right, except, except it's not about zombies, right, it's about apes, as in all the superheroes are now just monkeys with monkey pun names, I'd pause, put my hands to my big bold head, breathe in deeply and say, f Yes, bruv, I am literally going apes for this idea! Puns, I've got them and so have you! Number 5. Leatherwing The great thing about Batman is that you can literally just take him, pop his moody self into a load of alternate timelines, and watch him steal the show. Detective Comics Annual number 7, though, might just take the Batman transplant a tad too far. They made him a pirate. Batman, or Leatherwing as he's called in this timeline, is employed by King James II to pillage and cause havoc across the seas, mostly at the Spanish, because they have the most ships you see. Leatherwing comes with everything one would expect from Batman. His friend and servant Alfredo, a sidekick named Robin Redblade, and an evil pirate called the Laughing Man. Guess who that's based on? Number 4. 1001 Emerald Nights 1001 Arabian Nights is a collection of Middle Eastern stories, parables, and folktales. The device used to frame the stories is that of a woman who postpones her execution by telling her new husband stories with cliffhangers. Emerald Nights works in about the same way, except with the Green Lanterns. Emerald Nights shares the framing device of a storyteller, this time about a fisherman named Al Jordan, who finds a magic green lamp that grants him a genie of awesome power. The story is as out there as it gets, but the fantastic artwork and self-contained nature of the tale makes for a really impressive read. Number 3. Whom Gods Destroy Whom Gods Destroy presents a world in which the Nazis are very much large and very much in charge. It also decides to throw a bunch of crazy at the wall to see what sticks. For example, there's a Minotaur fight and a very pleasant ending with everyone living happily on the moon. It's certified bonkers. Number 2. Superman, True Brit Where Red Sun took itself very seriously with its dark tones and rather depressing imagery, True Brit decides to turn the whole Superman mythos into something of a tongue-in-cheek comedy. Once again, Superman's rocket doesn't land in Kansas, instead landing in England. The baby Cal L is found by the family Clark, who upon watching a video of his origins mishear his name as Colin. Colin then grows up and discovers his power through a series of accidents, but instead of learning to harness his abilities, they're repressed through a stereotypical British reluctance to stand out. 
out. The saga pokes fun at British tabloids, with Colin later working for the Daily Smear gross, and getting into a spot of bother over a cricket incident, as you do. John Cleese of Monty Python fame was one of the lead writers on this, by the way. What a top lad. And number one, Marvel What If the Marvel bullpen had become the Fantastic Four. The Marvel What If line has produced some amazingly stupid stories, although saying that, this next story takes the cake. So the story goes, what if the cosmic rays that imbued the Fantastic Four with their fantastic and foursome powers shone on the Marvel creators themselves? Q Stanley as Mr. Fantastic joined by his real-life colleagues as they battle evil instead of doing their jobs. But you know what? It's hard to hate this narrative for how monumentally silly it is. And that's our list. Got any other comic book storylines which are utterly timeless? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And then why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.